Okay, gents, so here's instalment number two in our video series on online dating mastery. We've already covered how to get the best images. If you haven't seen that video, that is part one. It's part one for a reason because it's the most important is achieving the right photos. Check out the link in the description box and also popping up now. Ding! All right, to watch that one on how to get the best images. But today's video is going to be more concerned with your written profile information and how to make that as appealing and lock in as much positive attention from the people you want to date as possible. Okay, so before we get into the bulk of the things you need to include or not include in your profile, let's just make a distinction. There are two kinds of dating sites, Tinder and the swipe sites, Tinder, Bumble, where nobody's paying, it's really a hookup and nobody's really that bothered with your profile or the more serious sites like Match.com where you are paying and profile information is very important because these are more serious daters, people looking for real romance, hookups as well, but for real dates where they're going to chat and look for potential partners. Thus, the profile is much more important on the paid sites. Tinder, stuff like that, tend to be for younger people and they're really purely aesthetic. Nobody gives a shit about your information in the bio. You want a cool strap line and that's it. So a couple of examples of kind of cool strap lines would be something like bad boy with good intentions, full-time tall guy if you're tall, right? Donald Trump's wingman. Funny, silly shit like this, right? Which says something quite cool about you, shows you have a sense of humor, shows you're very tall, right? Bad boy with good intentions, if you want to try and go for the bad boy vibe a little bit. They're all saying cool things and they're punchy. No one's going to read your bio in Tinder, so go for a good strap line. A couple of other good ones clients of mine have used. Travel junkie, dot, 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 full-time foodie. That's another good one, says a lot about your personality. I taught Michael Jackson how to moonwalk. It's all just silly stuff, right? It's funny, quirky, one strap line, that is enough. Now let's go on to the more important area when it comes to online dating and profiles especially, which is for the paid sites. So now let's progress on to paid sites like OkCupid, Match.com or Plenty of Fish. I think the leader is Match.com, but these are three of the biggest ones here in the UK. As I said, the information in your, in your profile now becomes very important. People who are paying for, for a site are going to want real value out of it, thus they're actually going to read the profile of their dates. The most important thing is your pictures, that's going to lock in their attention. If you look terrible, no one's going to read your profile. But if you look good in the pictures, well then, it's onto your profile. She's looked at your pictures, she's like, yeah, he's not bad, he's not blowing me away with his looks, but he dresses quite well, I like the locations, he looks cool, which if you follow the tips in the first part of this series, you can get that vibe off nearly everyone. But this lady is still on the fence, she's thinking he looks all right, but I'm not that bothered, I've got other guys. Well, what's going to sort of tip it in your favour is when she reads your profile. So now this is when your profile is make or break. If you seem boring, she's going to think, you know what, I'm not going to date him. But if you seem really cool, really fun and really interesting and you have the right values and personality traits written in that profile, well then you're more likely to get a date than not. Thus, we're going to give you a list of personality traits and life values which you need to have embedded throughout your profile and a few examples of how you can best get them in. So furthermore, most women online have a lot of guys trying to get dates. You know, their inboxes are going crazy. What is going to separate you from you know, the mass of hopefuls out there who are sending this particular woman messages hoping to get a date? Okay, if you write in a cool manner, funny manner, interesting manner, that is how you're going to be perceived. So this can really set you aside from the competition, put nudge her onto the right side of the fence and put you way above people who are on a physical level, sort of no different, even higher than yourself. Remember as well that men in their quest for dates generally tend to base everything on sex, sexuality and attraction. Women are very, very different to this, right? They're looking more for partners rather than hookups. They're basing stuff less on is he the man of my dreams physically and more the full overall package, which is actually much healthier than what guys do anyway. But women are looking at the full spectrum. Okay, so if you can write about yourself, which has the right personality traits, 
values, the right level of ambition, achievement, etc. All these really important key areas in it, translated in a really intelligent and direct manner with a bit of humor, it's going to be very successful. The man's role in the dating world is the man doing the chasing, constantly trying to get dates, obtain new women, kind of means that any viable option or anybody who's half attracted to him, a man will date. A woman is totally different. She has many more options, much less desire for a quick hookup and wants to try and find an emotional bond or someone who's going to be a potential partner, a like-minded soul, somebody they're going to really get on with. Thus, we need to lace the profile and everything you write with feminine friendly values. So we're not going to feminize you, but the way you write and your values have to be appealing to the feminine mind, to, to women's sensitivities. So we're going to give you a few tips on how you can make sure you master. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you two quick lists of traits, i.e. personality traits you want to keep constant throughout what you write and values within your life. Sounds a bit complicated, but it's going to make sense as we go through it. We're going to start off with the personality traits. Some of these kind of intermingle, but it's these traits and values which make up the character which women are going to find very, very attractive when they're re reading these online profiles. So the first trait we want to get into your profile is emotional depth. This is a massive factor in speaking to women in person, online, at any time. It's very important to attach your emotional state to what you're talking about. Imagine the person who you're going to be seeing on that date and think if they speak in a really fun, open, honest manner, they're interesting, they have emotion, you're going to tell they're going to be easy to get on with, they're going to be fun, right? And that is the key to a date. So thus, you're instantly going to put across this vibe of someone who's not too boring, not too arrogant, who's emotionally open and honest. So as I said, we're not going to feminize ourselves in these passages in the, the written profile. But what we are going to do is translate our information in a manner which appeals to feminine sensitivities, which women will respond to. OK, so showing this depth of emotion is very important, as is being individual and being emotional in the way you write is actually very individual. Most men are very macho, very shut off. They don't want to let any of their emotions escape. You don't want to be a little bitch because that's not manly, right? But you do want to show that you have an emotional side and speak with emotions about things. You could talk about being on a beach on holiday somewhere and feeling that it was the most enlightening spiritual moment of your life as you looked out to sea and saw a young boy be eaten by a shark. No, I'm kidding, right? But you want to, you know, if you're talking about that kind of scenario, you're on a beach somewhere, it was an emotional moment, it was a really emotive moment for your life. Speak with emotion, speak with passion. Not just, yeah, I was on a beach, right, and it was really nice, and there was loads of sun. That was in Cuba. That's rubbish. You want to talk in an emotional manner, a passionate manner, give it some depth. And this takes us back to that point of being different, showing individuality. You don't have to care about what other people think about you, and you're not trying to impress your mates now. Women are going to be reading this. So write it to help that target audience feel the vibes you are trying to transmit. So remember, these are traits and values in one list because they kind of intermingle. It's your aura, your essence, right? The trait you really need to emphasize throughout your profile is ambition, achievement, all the things which make you a man and a good prospect, a good guy to marry, a good breadwinner, a man who studied hard, a businessman, the kind of man, an old fashioned, traditional, good bloke, a good prospect. You want to show ambition in all areas of your life, be it socially ambitious, ambitious to travel more, ambitious to try more things, and especially ambition within your career. So you have to have you know, a real lust for life. You want to do everything. You want to try everything. Who is this guy going to be like? Not only is he going to be really rich and take care of me, he's going to want to travel all over the world. He's going to want to do everything. He's interesting. He's ambitious. He wants it all. He wants to accomplish everything, do everything, try everything. And usually people with that lust for life and that sort of energy to go out there, go getters, to grab life by the scruff of the neck and do whatever they want with it, do really well and are amazing people to hang out with or to date. So our next personality trait is being intellectual. OK, you don't have to start talking about the finer parts of chemistry in the periodic table or Pythagoras' theorem. No, that's boring. There's a big difference between being interestingly intellectual and a boring intellectual. 
Okay, let's think hobbies, part-time, and knowledge of life and culture. So in this way, we want to talk about our intellectual pursuits. You know, do you have a dream to go off and study Indian history while doing a yoga tour? That would be great. Do you love to hang around in art galleries? That would be great. Do you read 10 books a week? That would be great. So really, really play up your intellectual pursuits, okay? And never, ever use slang, abbreviations, bad grammar, emoticons in your profile. None of this shit. The most you can do is use dot, dot, dot and ha, ha. That's all you want to do, right? Never write badly. It makes you look like a shithead or a kid. It's not a good look. So be intellectual both in the way you write, the values you include in the profile, and in the use of stuff like icons, abbreviations. Okay, so all of these traits are incredibly important. You need to have these running through the whole of your profile. Every time you write, you want these traits to be sort of shining through as your underlying character. The guy speaking has these personality traits. Thus, what he's saying is affected by these personality traits. We're going to give you a few examples of how you're actually going to adapt that to what you want to say in your profile in a minute. Anyway, the last trait we need to talk about, and probably the most important of all, is being funny. A good sense of humour. Right? This is incredibly important. Let's go back to thinking about who we're on a date with. What is the one thing which is going to make sure that that date's going to go smoothly? Humour. If you can make your date laugh, if she feels that you're a fun, easy, light-hearted, easy to get along with guy, it's going to be cool. If you're boring, you never make any jokes, you're really serious, it's awkward as fuck, that's not going to be a good date. People respond to humour massively, so try to embed every area of the profile with bits of quirky jokes, little one-liners, finish off with a bit of a sense of humour. It doesn't have to be big punchline jokes, it has to have a vibe of underlying humour, little quips, little quirks throughout the profile. And as I said, we're going to show you how to do that in a minute. So now we've talked about the personality traits you want to have as your sort of basis for the way you're always going to be writing about everything. So we're going to give you an example of a really good way to talk about a really boring job. So imagine you're working in IT. It's very unglamorous. Most girls are not going to get turned on by the idea of a guy who works in IT. So you have to think of how you can make this glamorous. Ambition is incredibly important. The worst thing is just to be like, yeah, I'm satisfied in a crappy job where I don't earn much money and I'll just sit here for the rest of my life. Loser. No, you never want that. Even if that is what you're going to do. You're happy just to sit out a shitty job and earn a shitty wage. Some people are. You have to show ambition if you want to be more attractive. Even if it's not directly true, oh well, you're only talking about what you want to do in the future anyway, so you're not even lying. So thus, I would say something like, I'm currently working in IT. However, I have plans which are beginning to blossom to start my own vegan food delivery service. So if all goes according to plan, this time next year, I will be a, ve a vegan food overlord, quit the rat race and become a full-time world traveler, foodie and man of luxury. Okay, so let's have a look at what we've done there. All right, so I'm currently working in IT. Obviously, that's quite boring. We've totally, instantly jumped away from that and said, however, I have plans to, which are beginning to blossom, saying that it's going well, to start my own vegan food delivery service, something very common and popular within the cool world of nutrition and fitness right now. It's going well. I've got my own plans to start up my own business. Then you say you're going to quit the, r the rat race and become a full-time world traveller, foodie and man of luxury and a vegan food overlord. So what you're really sort of implying here is that even though your job is really boring, working in IT, you have another plan in the future which is going to get you rich. It's going to be in vegan food, something very cool, something very trendy at the moment. You're going to quit the rat race and become a full-time world traveller, foodie and man of luxury. Well, the person reading this is thinking, hmm, Wow, is he going to have a really, really good, successful vegan food company? I wouldn't mind joining him in quitting the rat race and becoming a full-time world traveller, foodie and woman of luxury. Obviously, everybody who reads this stuff about how you dictate the way your life is is going to be thinking about their own life and how their own life could fit into this and how cool your life is. So if you say, oh, I work in IT, it's rubbish, who wants to fit into that life? Nobody. Whereas if you've just said everything I've just said, it's the same guy. So it's the same crappy job in IT, except it's saying a huge amount more about what he's going to do with his future and how desirable he is as a partner in the long term.
Okay, so our next point is spirituality, right? A sense of spirituality and depth. Maybe depth is even better than spirituality. It's tying you into something more than just your average, you know, give me that, take that, career-minded, macho, sex-minded man. Very attractive to women and also a real, real core value to many, many women is a sense of spirituality, depth, and more to life than just money, sex, alcohol, and all the trappings which most youth base, base their lives around, especially most young men. So we're going to pop up how I would deal with spirituality and we're going to use that to transition on from our career. So imagine we've just talked about our career this time and we've said that we're a banker and then we've gone on to say that, you know what, despite being a banker, I have loads of other plans to start up my own vegan food company, so we've used that. We're now going to go into the sphere of spirituality. So let's check out the pop-up, which says, despite the fact that I am a banker and thus most people's definition of Satan, I actually consider myself to be a spiritual being. I love to meditate and find that yoga gives me the inner peace I need to deal with my, uh, my hectic life. I totally believe in karma and I'm constantly looking to improve myself, learn how to be a, be, be a better man and spread a bit of love wherever I go. So again, we started off by saying, despite the fact that I'm a banker, most people's definition of Satan, a little joke showing that, yes, you do have a good job. Yes, being a banker does have a lot of negative connotations about money, the root of all evil, and about the rat race, blah, blah, blah. You also have money. You are a member of the rat race. You're an achiever. You've got a great career. However, you know there's more depth. And thus, you go on straight from career, make a joke, say a banker is the definition of Satan, and then say, I consider myself to be a spiritual being. I love to meditate, yoga, inner peace, blah, blah, blah. I totally believe in karma. And I'm constantly looking to improve myself, learn how to be better and spread a bit of love. Most bankers, obsessed with money, Wolf of the Wall Street kind of vibe, that's what most women think about guys working in Canary Wharf or Wall Street or men who work with money, big amounts of money. They think they're shallow. Yeah, they've got money. Yeah, they've got a lot of things on paper to be an el eligible partner, but they don't have any depth. Okay, so thus, this sense of spirituality, depth, talking about, you know, traveling, karma, all these kinds of things are going to be very attractive and another thing you could definitely lace into your profile in the language which fits you and how you write. Okay, so our next value we're going to call charity. All right, this one, if you really are someone who doesn't give a shit about being charitable, has never helped anyone in your life, then you can straight up lie and use charity it's going to get attention and women tend to love guys who have shown some sense of charity, giving back, helping others, or you can just play it down and use this a little bit, okay? But a sense of charity, giving back is always very important. It's not just about you. Women love a man who has a bit of a sense of community and who wants to help and not just make money and get drunk. So here we have it up on the screen here. Just remember guys, men are selfish and self-obsessed, you know? You can show that you're different, sexy, confident, and a very admirable character by showing a bit of giving back, you know, helping people out. And this, again, carries on perfectly from what we've just said about depth and spirituality. It's all the same area. It's bettering yourself, so bettering yourself and showing your core values. So let's read this one. My long-term aim is to get rich and get the hell out of the city life. Ideally, when the bright lights of the city have lost their shine, I will start my own charity in South America or India, teaching kids from disadvantaged backgrounds computer skills to help them in, the, in their future careers. I really believe in the West we are incredibly lucky in life and waste far too much time with superficial crap like watching the Kardashians or obsessing over Instagram. It's all so soulless and I know that there is more out there for me. Okay, so we started off by talking about your hotshot job again. You're a banker. You're an IT guy. My long-term aim is to get rich and get the hell out of the city. So you're showing your dynamic. Right now you're working, you're earning money, you're going to get rich. So yeah, it shows you've got those alpha male qualities. You're a good breadwinner. You're bringing the money in. You represent all of those good qualities. But let's think about the other side of the, of the coin. Are you going to be a complete twat? Are you going to lack spirituality, depth, charity, giving back? 
Well, thus we're going to follow up from the first very macho statement by saying, ideally, blah, 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 when I've finished my city life, I'll start my own charity in South America. That's really admirable. Most men aren't thinking about that. Most men don't want to give back. Most men don't care about suffering kids in South America or India. It's really going to set you aside, show some really desirable long-term aims, and also is indicating you're going to be so rich that before even retirement, you're going to have enough to go and travel and work for a charity. Very desirable. And once again, our target here is going to be sitting, thinking, wow, I'd like to go with this guy. I really like what this guy is thinking about his life and what he's doing. I can see this person as a like-minded soul and a good long-term prospect. Okay, so our next value we're going to call adventure, all right, or travel. And again, this one, as is the point with every single one of the points we're making, can, can sort of roll on from the last value you've written. So you've talked about how you would love to go away, experience a traveling charity, etc., etc. It's now the perfect time to transition into your love of travel. Okay, everybody loves to travel, everybody talks about it in their online profiles. You want to make sure that you shine a little bit and show that you don't just love to travel so you can go and get drunk in bars and clubs or get a tan or, you know, get cheap trainers in America. That's very man, masculine reasons to travel. So thus, I would talk about my love for travel or my Wanderlust. That means a lust for traveling in German. I would speak about that and frame it in this manner. So let's have a look at the pop-up. For me, there is nothing more thrilling than the sensation of stepping off a plane in some far off mysterious land and being hit by a wave of new sm sounds, smells and sights. Money can buy pretty things, but travel and culture are the keys to true wealth. Okay, so once again, look at all of the different personality traits. This is an individual. This guy is different from the crowd. He does his own thing. He has depth, spirituality, a love for life, travel, ambition, all these kind of things. He is a really, really good prospect. That is what this one statement, and especially combined with the other statements we've just made, is going to transmit about this person. So traveling is about the mysterious land, the smell, sounds and sights. Money can buy pretty things, but travel is the key to true wealth. Throughout this passage, we've shown that you have money, but for you, money is a product of your achievement and simply allows you to invest in things which are more important, like travel, charity and other more important elements of your persona. So this actually is covert showing off. We're talking about money and our achievements, but we're always playing them down by talking about a totally, totally sort of conflicting value on the other end of the spectrum, like spirituality or charity or depth to even out the balance. And thus, when we talk about travel, we want to do the same thing as we do when we're talking about money, ambition, and show that for you, traveling is all about the cultural elements. So this, again, would be a very, very cool way to talk about your love for traveling. Okay, so literally, if you combine the points we've put in this video into one profile to tailor make it with your own vibe, your own language, you're going to have a very strong profile alluding to most of the main points that people want to read about when they're first looking at a potential partner's profile, their information online. The last point, and we have to re revisit it because it's also a personality trait, is humour. Right, so one of your values must be a good sense of humour, the ability to make people laugh. So we're going to revisit this one because it's often the hardest thing to do. It has to be the most spontaneous in appearance, right? And you need it laced constantly throughout all the values. Not big one-liner jokes, little funny quips and quirks, as I mentioned earlier. A sense of humour is not only important because who doesn't want somebody who's going to make them laugh on a date? It's also important because if you use a good sense of humour, you can literally show off about anything you want. The easiest way for you to show off and to show that you have good things you've achieved, you've done good things, you're ambitious, you're wealthy, you're intellectually you know, advanced. The best way to talk about these achievements is to play them off by taking the piss out of yourself and showing a good sense of humour. So usually you're going to direct the sense of humour at yourself, taking the mickey, teasing yourself, taking the piss out of yourself, whatever you want to call it. But remember, you never take the piss out of something which is really a negative trait. So, for example, if you're really fat, you're not going to take the piss out of being overweight. If you're very small, you're not going to call yourself a hobbit. 
you're going to take the piss, take the mickey, you're going to tease yourself for areas of your life which are actually desirable or which have no relevance to your real status in society. Oh yes, and did I mention that I have pink fluffy slippers and a pink matching dressing gown? Dot, dot, dot. Well, they're actually salmon, not pink. Dot, dot, dot. It takes a real man to wear salmon. So that kind of thing. It's silly. It doesn't, it doesn't even matter if you own pink dressing gown or pink slippers. It's a funny joke. It's got a nice tie in by saying it takes a real man to wear salmon pink. Cool. Take the mickey out of yourself. Let's go on to the next one. Oh, yeah. And did I mention I'm a massive Harry Styles fan? Dot, dot, dot. 1D just totally float my boat. OK, obviously we're kidding, right? If you are a Harry Styles fan, do not mention it. Never say 1D. And they definitely don't float your boat or you're on the wrong dating website. OK, so again, we're going to make funny comments just to show you have a sense of humour and not take yourself too seriously. Did I mention that I like to cook breakfast butt naked while singing opera? Again, let's give her a funny mental image of you singing opera, walking around your kitchen butt naked, making a fry up. It's fun. It shows you don't take yourself too seriously and you're going to be a laugh if she ever ends up in your kitchen. It's also placing a bit of sexual emphasis on her being in your kitchen. Makes her feel like she knows you, you're very open and you're a funny guy. Talking about your, your educational experience, you could say, I studied at the University of Sussex where I did a part-time degree in architecture and a full-time degree in being hungover and eating kebabs. So again, it's another student cliche. It's showing you don't take yourself too seriously. But once again, we're getting across the fact that you did architecture at the University of Sussex. You're lacing achievements with some counteracting values and showing you have a sense of humour about it all as well. Finally, let's play on a few cultural stereotypes. So if you say something like, I'm from Essex, however, I don't wear fake tan. Or I'm from Liverpool, however, I don't own a shell suit. So those are obvious cultural stereotypes about your location. Think of where you're from. I'm from Scotland, however, I don't like deep fried Mars bars. Say something cultural, make a joke about it, just to keep lacing in these quips. OK, that's another one on your sort of stereotypical cultural identity. You can do that again with your job. Instead of saying I'm a banker, you could say I'm a banker dot dot wanker. Sorry, I meant banker. Obviously, it's a joke. Everyone thinks bankers are wankers. Say you know that, right? You could say something like, I'm a full-time scientist. I spend most of my time working in a science lab with goggles and a long white coat on. In fact, I think you could say that I am a super geek. Again, right, we're taking the piss out of our job. A super geek, but you're also embracing your identity. You could then go on to say how much you love your career and science is everything to you. You're embracing the super nerd whilst being funny. OK, so guys, the whole idea is to constantly lace in silly quips, little jokes like this throughout the profile, mix them in with the other traits and values, and then you're going to have a very, very strong written online profile.